So it's Christmas Eve, Eve, Eve. You'll probably be getting this on Christmas Eve, Eve, if I get it my act together and manage to get it up there. So we're back to the plants again. Don't think there won't be more plant videos. The basis of this channel is still plants, but of course I am expanding it a little bit to include other areas of growth that interest me. And if they interest you too, great. If they don't, we'll just skip them. We'll go on to the plants soon enough. Okay, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a festive look around the greenhouse. There are a surprising number of blooms in here. I'm really shocked actually at how many have come out over the last couple of weeks. I think in part because I've had a slightly different approach this year, which I might get into, as we work our way around and I'll also look at some foliage as well some great foliage stuff going on but I'll start with the bloom so if you're only into blooms you can just watch part of it okay let's get cracking and we are in so we're going to work our way over here let's start with the cyclamen because they're all out now more or less there's still a couple not quite come uh, but you can see quite clearly lots and lots going on here in terms of cyclamen I do believe that our friends in America can't get so many different varieties of cyclamen um, now I've also found that to be true in terms of what they get in like Asia area like Singapore Japan they have some wonderful hybrids over there no idea why we don't get them also no idea why you don't get them over in the US quite the same because you'd think they're very easy to transport you can transport them in the off season can't you when they're dormant so anyway let's have a little look absolutely beautiful things this is a, a pink one with kind of like a white edging to it or even well it's not really an edging is it it's more towards the center there and then you get that like dark pink underneath beautiful thing and it's different on each bloom it changes as they age it becomes darker as they get a little bit older Always worth looking at the foliage on these things as well. A basic red one, but also one that is quite a large flowered one. A beautiful thing. And as we move over, so this is my oldest one, great big massive tuber, but it's always a little late coming into bloom. Nice foliage on it and beautiful reflex petals. Gorgeous, gorgeous center there to the flower. Um, nice darker pink, nice contrast little one hidden away down here another pink one but far more of a, a bicolor you know a real genuine bicolor that one um, you can see there the differences in in not only the ages of the petals uh, but in the different kind of i suppose it's variegation isn't it even though it's on the petals not just on the leaves so working our way over here a little bit of work to do on this one i think some are going a little bit over there they've gone dark along the edges actually i'm not sure whether that might be it's in the direction of the fan so the fan might be causing that um, they're certainly happy with the cooler temperatures this is what they love they love anything around 12 to 20 degrees i'll just skip over the soto anum for a second i'll come back to that in a second this one is all the better for the foliage really really love that foliage how you've got the contrast between the real dark center and it's almost like a i mean you might not be able to see it on the video but it's like a silvery minty green if they go together i'm hopeless at describing colors but to me in certain lights as i kind of twinkle it there between my fingers it's looking silvery and minty um, again beautiful delicate little blooms so next to it we have a very very reliable bloomer for me Oncidium sotoanum beautiful species orchid gorgeous scent to it and every year it just gets better and better you can see the number of blooms on this thing it's very nice next to the cyclamen there it did have some trouble with it at one point when it caught spider mite but uh, it recovered just missed a year out so that's looking super stunning at the moment. I'm surprised at how many orchids I've got in bloom actually at the moment. So the reason I think is that I am watering less. Despite everything I talk about in terms of care, it's really the basics that I come back to. And the basics in this case is I'm in a cool environment, it's winter, they don't need loads of water. Um, the, it's, it's the kindness that kills them. So I found that by neglecting them a little bit, they're actually 
uh, blooming more than when I thought I was giving them more care. In other words, I watered them too much. I didn't let them dry out. And this year, I really am leaving them. I'm leaving them two to three weeks in many cases. I mean, you know, I'm being very general here. It depends, doesn't it? As all of us plant people know, it depends. They want it when they want it. Uh, but in many cases in the greenhouse, I'm not watering these orchids for between two and three weeks and I'm really letting them dry out and I'm letting them stay dry for a good length of time before I water them again and that prevents the root rot. Okay moving on up look at this so this is my delightful Lelia Anceps now it missed a season last year mainly because Lelia Anceps another species I've tons of species in here not just orchids uh, mainly because it's quite sticky there a little bit of nectar on it they like the light and um, again i've talked about this before plants in a small seemingly the same environment can react differently in different places in that environment you would not think that in a space like this that there are differing environments and there are and um, the Lelia Anceps wants some bright light, very bright light, and it couldn't get it where it was. So what did it do? It stopped growing roots and it stopped growing bloom spikes. Happy to say that the bloom spikes are back and the blooms are back. Now it's not huge, it's not like a great big three foot long bloom spike like I've had in the past, but who cares, it's a bloom, I'm quite happy with that. Beautiful thing, another beautiful scent. That's my Lelia Anceps, and I'll just show you what the rest of it looks like down here. It's in moss, and again, I let it dry out. And the roots are actually going through the basket into the gravel underneath. It's so happy. So that's my Lelia Anceps, and let's move on to our next bloom. Now, you might not spot it from here. It's one of those little gems, a gorgeous little thing. So I'm going to lift it up and show you. I refrained from buying a Restrepia for quite a number of years because they were so small, but this one is a larger one. And okay, it's not huge, but the detail in these blooms is exquisite, absolutely exquisite in my humble opinion. So, a sweep around the greenhouse and you'll miss it but get close up if I can hold the thing still and you'll see what a beautiful thing it is just a stunning little thing I think exquisite is the perfect word for it it is a little gem now even if I hold my breath I can't hold it still I'll try and put it down and let's see if we can so we don't knock it off get a close-up of this thing because it's well worth looking closely at it. Look at that. So this is Restrepia gutulata. Strange word. And so far, I mean, this is only the second bloom I've had on it. Um, I've never had more than one at a time, but it is only a small plant and it certainly seems happy enough tiny one here so this is my penguicula uh, guatemala pretty little thing and you can see it's forming its winter rosette so these should just pull away there you go so they're the summer ones there's another little bloom in the middle i find these do tend to bloom over the winter and it will form a tight little knot in the middle there and then it will come back again in the summer i find a few of these Drosera types do that, uh, different carnivorous plants that we've got over here. Some of them disappear. This one actually disappears. What's this one? Hard to see. This is Drosera modesta. This one disappears over summer and then comes back again at winter. Again, you can't, it's one of those that you can, you get fantastic photos of it if you can really zoom in and do the kind of macro photographs but on a video camera it just looks like a whole bunch of nothingness this doesn't look like nothingness so this is my oncidium sotoanum i know i've shown it before it blooms for such a long time and it smells stunning and it really is a great plant i know in certain parts of the world it's almost considered like a phalaenopsis in other words very common lots of people grow them uh, but over here in the uk certainly in the north of the UK, you don't see them that often. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen one. I've not even seen one at the Orchid Society for some reason. 
Um, but I mean, it's well worth growing and it certainly brings more than a hint of the tropics to my humble little greenhouse here. So onto the back of this, we have Mastavalia ignea. Always worth looking at because the colors on it, it looks like you've added some extra saturation into the, and I haven't, that's just the color of it. Ignea is the perfect description for it. It really is like volcano red. It is like it's igniting. It's just a flame of red and really, really bright orange. Beautiful thing. Um, it's got me four blooms at the moment and there's quite a number of spikes under there. So I'm happy that that is going to give me a good show this year. Again, wasn't that great last year. Probably a bit of spider mite and overwatering, but this year, happy to say, it's back to its best. Over here we have the glorious Dendrobium berry odor. It's only just coming into bloom this one, so it's got plenty more to show me yet. There's some more bloom spikes at the back there and over there. I've seen much better specimens than mine, but it's coming on, you know, it's, it's recovering from its last couple of seasons. They take such a long time, don't they, orchids, to recover when they've been attacked by something. So let's move on over to the other side of the greenhouse. So here we have the unusually named Epicat Layer Volcano Trick crossed with, what is it? <laughs> Lelio Cat Layer Janet Sparkle. It came to me in the end. I've had it a few years, but it's such a long name, I keep forgetting it. I think Volcano Trick is a really good name for it because it certainly is, just like the Master Valley Arignia, it is like an erupting volcano. Beautiful thing, and it is blooming in 12 and a half degrees. I thought this one, especially with it being uh, like a, a mixture of cat layer types, I thought it would prefer the warm temperatures. I mean, maybe these are its death throws. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's decided, right, I'll just throw one last, because they, they do that, don't they, plant? I'll just throw one last bloom out before I die and see if I can uh, create some more little orchids. But I don't think so. It's looking healthy. It's just a really good cross that you don't actually come across that often. And it is extremely happy here in the greenhouse, in its pot, big, big plant. And I'm really pleased that it's come back to life for me. In fact, when it was over in the hothouse, it went a season without blooming. So maybe it doesn't want, for whatever reason, that, that mixture of cat layer types, it doesn't want the warm temperatures all year round. It clearly didn't over in there, in the hothouse. I mean, it could have been something to do with the light. Maybe I had it in the wrong place and I've got it in a brighter place here. So we have a couple of nearly in blooms here. Not quite as good to see a nearly in bloom. So this is my Hibiscus Rosa Sinensis um, Sprinkle Rain. Well, this is the best it's looked. It, despite the weather again, it's still throwing out loads of blooms. Now that normally loses its leaves. You just never know with things like this. I know it had spider mites as well. But I mean, look at these, for example, just go off topic slightly here. Two plumeri here. One completely, well, not completely leafless, but almost leafless. And the other one, no signs of going dormant. Quite happy as it is. Two different hybrids of plumeria. And plumeria normally lose their leaves. Who knew? So we have a Brassia Orange Delight about to come. This is again another... A really reliable bloomer for me. I actually split this this year. I think I've got about three of them at the moment because it was so huge and it was just falling over. So hopefully we'll have a few plants that I maybe want to give away. So on to the foliage. I know I keep showing this and photographing it, but wow, this is my Begonia Black Knight. Definitely my most favorite Begonia of the moment. And it seems to be that in these temperatures, it wants to grow more than ever. It's just a stunning, chocolatey, scrumptious, galaxy, star-ridden delight of a plant. I love it. Absolutely love it. I mean, what's not to like? I mean, I've not seen any blooms on it yet, but it just keeps drinking all the water and I keep watering it again, even with cold water from outside. And it's just, I can't do anything wrong with it at the moment. Just a stunning thing. Absolutely love it. And I'm really sorry for people who can't get hold of it. But if you live in the UK, you should be able to. So I bought this one from Dibley's. Was it Dibley's? Yes, it was Dibley's, I think it was. The one that has all, it's not Firebreaks. No, they're just Pelagoniums, aren't they? Dibley's. 
Yeah, I think they only start sending out again in about March time. But if you can get hold of this, definitely one to take a look at. Beautiful thing, and we've got the uh, solid silver in the background there. That's just recovering from some slug damage. So I've got my Begonia Connie Boswell, the metallic tones of Begonia Connie Boswell. And that just, it just wants to go longer and longer and longer. And I keep trying to cut it back. I mean, there are some nice little uh, leaves coming down there. So I could cut that off, but I am reluctant to because it looks so nice. I also almost lost curly fire flush. I'm glad to say that too has recovered. Again, doesn't seem too bothered with the temperatures and hopefully we can get that coming back again. I thought, because that had gone right down to the rhizome, I thought I'd completely lost it. That's the way plants go. You win some, you lose some. Another nice foliage plant down here. So this one is Begonia Candy Queen. Again, now I would have said this was one that was sensitive to temperatures because it did seem to be, but for some reason at the moment it ain't. And then we've got my Begonia Arachnoidea. I've done a few Begonia videos recently. Um, but I just can't get enough of them. That one is looking beautiful and getting better and better despite the low temperatures. And the one that I was after for years, my little begonia autumn ember. Look at that, that's coming up. That was a tiny, tiny little thing. You think it's small now, I should have seen it before. I've not got it in any special protection other than this. So the temperature is just the same as it is. It's probably a degree more because it's inside this pot, but I'm just keeping the humidity high. Um, really, it's just that extra protection, you know, the humidity is already high in here, but for some reason it makes me feel better, whether it feels better or not inside that pot, I do not know. And everybody's favourite, Melanobulat, although not everybody's favourite, somebody said to me that it gave, you know, I can't even remember the word, there was a word for it that basically, it was like some kind of phobia that basically meant that you were phobic towards any kind of repeated pattern, which is a bizarre one I'd never heard before. <laughs> Begonia melanobulata looking absolutely fabulous to me but somebody else said it looked like chocolate chips uh, which yeah I prefer that description obviously I think chocolate chips who doesn't like chocolate just as another little side interlude here this was my boot begonia no it's not a begonia this is my banana my insetti and what had happened to this is that I'd left it out too late. I thought this year, I'll oh, forget it. I had enough to do. I'll just let it die this year. And I left it right through to kind of early December. So it was completely frosted. All the leaves died off and I just pulled it up. I chopped the leaves off straight across the top and I pulled it up and not many roots left at the bottom at all. Most of them had rotted off and it started to shoot up another leaf as you can see so i thought oh you know it doesn't want to die so and i do i do like it i do love the thing i, I was just at that time you know you just get so overwhelmed with things and i thought no we'll just let it die off i'll have a change and uh, it doesn't want to go so i've got a pot and i'm going to pot it up uh, let's start again with it why not so all the things looking good over here so the griffon's still hanging on i know it does after a couple of months it does begin to do this kind of thing as the temperatures get to it it should hopefully survive now this one everybody thinks it's a cane begonia it's not it's actually a rhizomatous begonia it's an upright rhizomatous begonia so all of these are rhizomes and they will store enough food water whatever it needs to recover if it does completely defoliate so, you know, it's nothing to worry about. If it does decide that it's had enough of these rubbish temperatures over here in the UK, it will come back again. I find that at 12 degrees, I'd say by like February, it's struggling a little bit, even though the light's coming better. But I'm, I'm confident to know it will come back. Next to it, we've got Begonia Mazei F Nigricans. And you can see at the moment, with the kind of light levels it's getting, we're getting these lovely, uh, kind of mottled effects. Now this can go completely black in really really bright light uh, but at the moment I'm not sure actually I might have got those the wrong way around uh, but at the moment this is what it's giving me a different whether that's because it's too bright because it is kind of under a bright light here uh, or whether it's because the light isn't enough I can't really remember but one or the other it can the leaves can go absolutely black but here you've got this lovely mottled effect. And I love both, I really like both. I like it when it's really black and I like it when it's got the, this mottled green on it, yellowy green on it. Looks absolutely stunning in my opinion. 
Nepenthe is still looking good despite the lack of light and the fact that it's coming through to winter now. Still looking okay. I have lost a number of pictures mainly because, like I said earlier, I've not been watering, so I've not been coming in here quite as much. And nothing will lose pictures more than letting it dry out. So I kind of guilty of letting it dry out a little bit, letting them all dry out a little bit. I lost quite a number of pictures off this one up here. This one is Berkey Eye. Oops, there we go. Got you on there. Sorry about that. So yeah, there's a few dying off that just because I let it go too dry. There's a new one coming on anyway. So I've watered it anyway, so you'll be pleased to know it will not die off. Now, poor old Begonia longiciliata is suffering a little bit in these temperatures. I do believe, again, that it will go below zero, according to my friend in Australia. He's had it at something like minus five, his. But again, it's a rhizometrous one, so it should return. Now, the difference with the climate is his is very, very dry, really, really low humidity. And I can't get the humidity that low in here. At the moment, it's roughly 90% humidity. I mean, obviously I've just watered, but it does range between 80 to 95% humidity for most of the winter. So I have been leaving it a little bit on the dry side. So we have got the odd yellowing leaf. So this will be my first winter with this in these kind of temperatures. So let's see what happens. I do feel though, especially as these rhizometrous ones kind of creep over towards the edge of the pot and then over the side and end up falling over, that it's not a bad thing to lose some of the leaves because you can kind of tidy it up a little bit. And this is what I've been doing with my pelagoniums. I will be doing a video on that. I don't know whether people are interested in that or not, but I'll be doing a video regardless. So that's what's looking good at the moment on a miserable December winter's day. So you can see why I have all these things because when it is so miserable outside, you can come in here and you can have a taste of the tropics. Yet it doesn't feel the temperatures of the tropics, but to look at these plants and smell the scent, something that you just don't get when everything outside is either dead or dormant. It's such a wonderful rush and it really does give me that boost through the dark winter months. So I've got tons of plans coming up for the new year. Um, I'm not retired, I'm still gardening, I've still got jobs going on, but through the winter months I can make more and more videos. And one of my goals is just to make videos that I enjoy making. I know it doesn't always match up with what everybody wants, I try to match it up, but it makes sense that if I'm going to continue doing this, that I make things that I enjoy doing. So that's what I'm going to do. So if you see things that don't fit specifically with what you're interested, just skip it. That's what I do. I don't watch everything on BBC One. I don't watch everything on Sky Sports. I just pick and choose. So have a great Christmas and a wonderful new year. I have a couple more videos coming out. One about podcasts. Uh, again, it will cover some plant podcasts if you're interested in good plant podcasts. But I've also put some other podcasts in there that I, that I listen to. And I've also got one about the goals. Uh, and a goal setting system and the habits, practices and systems I've put into place to achieve my goals in 2024. So if you're interested in that, please do watch. If you're not, give it a miss and then wait for the next plant video. Have a great Christmas. Have a great new year. I'll see you soon. Bye.